So, we're gonna assemble a baritone guitar. For a while I've been wanting to purchase one. There are quite a few inexpensive models on the market. I was really inspired by the band Loathe. They tend to use inexpensive models to achieve their huge sound. But I thought there could be a more inexpensive route, and that is to assemble one just with a neck and a body, and then mod it so that that neck and body actually work together to achieve a baritone guitar. So the first thing we're going to do is buy the neck, and we're going to buy this on eBay. So right here, this is exactly what we need, and it's in the kind of style I want with the big block inlays and the huge fender style headstock. And it's just a straight up maple neck, and the price is right, $65. So we're gonna buy this, and that's gonna be sort of our baseline price. And already this is way, way less expensive than some of the more lower end baritone models on the market. So for the body, we're going to go to Guitar Fetish, and we're gonna get a hardtail strat body. The cool thing is you can kind of scroll through here and you see, like for example, this one, this is a hardtail. So it doesn't have the route in the back of the body for the springs and the claw. It doesn't have the route on the top for the block. The only thing it has are string through holes. So let's find a color we like. And what I want is something a little bit more minimal. So I'm looking for something that's kind of like an off-white. Here you go. Perfect. So here's the one that we're going to use. It's a vintage cream color. I want my palette to be pretty minimal. So I'll be using kind of neutral colors like cream and kind of off-white and maybe some mint green. So I got my neck in. This is the $65 neck and it is pretty darn cool. I love that it's unfinished. So it's literally like raw maple. A lot of these necks you get are sealed. And when they're sealed, it's really hard to apply like a stain. You can certainly lacquer it and tint it, but this gives us a lot more options and a lot more opportunity to kind of do something interesting. So standard plastic nuts, we have the block inlays, medium jumbo frets, and a binding. This is a pretty awesome neck because it is bound at this kind of like off-white binding. And that's 30-inch scale. All right, here is the mint green pickguard material and my hardtail bridge. There you go. We have our string through holes and traditional saddles that you'd find like on a Strat style guitar. Here's a mint green pickguard. So it is big enough for basically one pickguard. Flippin' cool. Look at this. That is just standard Strat style body. We even have the string ferrule routes in here. Of course, we're not going to use them. We're going to have to plug these because they're going to move down. It is a awesome color. It's like vintage cream. It's really nice. And the mint green pick guard on there is going to look killer. And then we'll do some off-white pickup covers for the single coils. So in order for us to be able to get this 30 inch scale neck to work properly on this body, we need to shift some things. In particular, we need to shift the actual pickups. So if I were to put on the 30 inch scale neck, you can see that the strings terminate quite a way back, right? And if we position our hardtail bridge on there, the hardtail bridge, now in its new 30 inch position, is really far away from that bridge pickup. We need to move the bridge pickup over. But to keep the ratio and the distance between those pickups equal, it means we need to move the middle pickup route over two. So both those pickup routes need to be moved over. And this is a really simple thing to do. You don't need a CNC, you don't need CAD, you just need a single coil template. You need to kind of determine what that ratio is between three pickups and then just scooch them over and make your route. Easy peasy, nothing to it. But because we have a CNC, we're gonna be designing this here and then we're going to be using the machine for the operation. So the first thing that we wanna do is kind of scooch things over a bit. And so, what I did was I just kind of moved them over. So I eyeballed it, right? I didn't take any precise measurements. I just moved that bridge pickup route over as much as I could where I thought it would be appropriate. And then I moved the middle pickup over as well so that we would have that equal proportion between 
the neck, the middle, and the bridge. And that's what we did. So what that looks like is essentially this. These are my new routes. And if we look at that, this is what it's gonna look like. We essentially have the new position for the middle and the bridge. That's it, nothing to it. Now, obviously when we build our pick guard from scratch, we're gonna have to design these new things in there. So let's see what this looks like kind of mocked up. I have some pickups in here. One of the things we're changing with the original configuration, it will not be three knobs, it'll be two knobs. There's no reason for me to have two tone knobs. All right, so now what we have to figure out is how to hide the original string through holes. So a normal pick guard has this route here for the trim to go in and kind of like seat in there. If we get rid of that and we just make it a line, then we can keep that iconic look of the pick guard, the original pick guard, only now it doesn't have the trim route. It's now just a straight line. And this looks fabulous, but it still means we have exposed string through holes. So all I did was make a little kind of tail for it like this. So it just basically swoops in and it basically just covers it. And honestly, it's a quick design fix. It's not elegant in any way, but it kind of tricks the eye. When you look at the pick guard, it looks like a normal pick guard. There's that little lip that's just covering those string through holes. But otherwise, it's the identical, iconic, normal strap pick guard. This is the cleanest way and quickest, most efficient way to hide those original holes. And it's just putting a little tail on the end of a pick guard. That's my plan, I'm sticking to it. So that's what we're gonna do. All we have to do now is go to the CNC and put these routes in the body. So the routes are done and these are just adaptive tool paths so there's no finish work and there's no need it's just a hog out really so that's what it looks like so first things first the neck and the body fit perfectly in this pocket i'll just kind of show you there it is tight fit so you'll notice look at that super tight i can throw it and catch it really great fit so i clamped it to the body and then i drilled the neck holes so these are all ready and set up one of the other things was this was set up for vintage style tuners um which is kind of a shame uh, so what i did was went to the drill press and i made these 10 millimeter holes so it was simple there you don't have to see that process you go halfway this way flip it halfway meet in the middle you get zero tear out so there's no tear out so what's the plan for plugging these i don't have one yet so I'm thinking maybe we'll do an inlay, meaning we'll come in here with a CNC and route out that and then inlay a nice piece of exotic hardwood, maybe just some rosewood with kind of a nice laser engraved signature, a plaque of some sort, something. So we'll have the new string files pushed off here and then this will be some kind of inlay work to hide those. It'll, it'll look good. The cool thing about this build is 
trying to get the kind of costs down to be something that's not terribly expensive, although that's not the main goal or priority. But just being a guitar builder, I have a lot of stuff in my stash, like lots of bits and bobs and extra pieces. So we're gonna take advantage of all that stuff to kind of save money. So for example, I wanted to have cream covered pickup covers, and I just happened to have some in my stash, so. And they're just, you know, they're brand new. I just had them in my stash. And nothing special, just off-white or cream. I don't know what color that is. Same thing with like strap buttons. Like I just happen to have strap buttons because we took these off the Tom DeLong Squire Starcaster. We put strap locks on that project. So I just have these brand new strap buttons, which are going to go perfectly on this strap. And then I just happen to have some Spurzels. They're the kind of like matte gray, which make them look super cool. And they're also staggered. And then what I had decided on for pickups was just to use ceramic pickups. Because this is a 30 inch scale baritone using very thick, heavy gauge strings, we don't have to really worry about warmth in terms of like the quality of the tone that we're getting from our pickups. What we need to worry about is attack, getting rid of the flubbiness, sort of getting rid of that bottom end and tightening things up. And ceramic pickups are known for kind of tightening up that low end. out way better than I thought it would. I was pretty scared to do this because I've never made a pick guard on the CNC. And these are unknown tool paths, meaning I've never run tool paths like this before. In particular, the chamfer or the bevel. And so I always wanted to do a bevel. I always thought, hmm, I'm gonna get a chamfer end mill. But you don't have to. I saw Chris from Highland Guitars use just a V-bit. So you do the contour path with a V-bit and it automatically makes the bevel. So the trick here obviously is to do the peck drilling first, and that's the same end mill as the routes for the pickups. 
And then I do the route for the neck pocket because you want this to be straight. You don't want there to be a bevel anywhere here. And then you gotta switch end mills to do the slot. And traditionally this is like a 1.58 width, but I just used a two mil end mill and that worked out fine. And then of course you have to switch end mills again and put the V-bit in to get the contour in. And the contour is just starting here, going all the way around and ending there. And that's how you get this perfectly straight edge with the bevel on the corners. Pickguard came out really awesome. It exceeded all my expectations. I'd never built a pickguard before on the CMC. Two CTS pots, one for the master volume and the master tone, and then really nice five-way switch. And I'll be using the cloth covered wires just because that's what my strap pickup set came with. So I got um Three of these CTS pots, the Oak Grisby, Jack, you know, the orange drop, and the cloth covered wires all in like a little, you know, package. Um, I do have a Fender branded Jack plate, and it's a really good idea to get the genuine Fender stuff because I think the overseas plates are either like different here at the bottom or deeper or whatever. So I just want to make sure you get an actual Fender one. The other cool thing I did, obviously, was uh, build a template on the laser using cardboard. And the reason why I did this was to test fit everything, and I'm glad I did. Because when I did line everything up, one thing was off, and that was the pick guard screw here. It was actually going through into my new route, so it was coming out here. And so all I did was move this over about 10 mil down to actually touch wood, and that was it. It's a really cool method for testing things on the laser, just using cardboard. So I did use the conductive shielding paint here. You don't really have to. I just did it to do it, just because I could. about to take the tape off. So what I did was I hit it with the aged clear. That's just the go-to lacquer that I used from Stumac. And it essentially tints the wood. So basically instead of using like the kind of traditional vendor amber stain, it's already in a tinted lacquer format. And it just works out a lot better than staining. You just spray it on and you basically keep spraying it on until you achieve the color that you're looking for. And a lot of people think that that vintage Fender neck color is like an amber, and it's not. It's brown. 
And so there's a little bit of brown in that aged clear. And the more you put on, the darker it gets. And this is what I wanted right here, this much. It's uh, just a very subtle dark hue. And it's way better than the kind of pale white of maple. And it's really smooth. So after I hit it with the aged clear, then I go with my other go-to, which is the satin nitro. And everybody knows that nitro melts into nitro, and that's really my trick. The satin nitro from Stumac does not need to be sanded. So unlike traditional clear coats of nitro, where you have to sand between coats, and then you have to do your kind of final sand and buff, you don't do that with satin. The satin nitro is self-leveling. I've said this a thousand times in all my videos. This is how I'm able to kind of churn these necks out very quickly for these videos. I don't do any sanding. So you get that satin feel, it self levels, it never runs, and the satin will melt into the lacquer of the aged clear, and so this is, this is what you get right here. And we'll do all the oiling of the board down the road before we put strings on it. I'm not gonna bother with that right now. So I haven't screwed down the pickguard onto the body yet, so it's still kind of floating. Tone conversion parts caster is complete. A couple of things, it sounds pretty awesome. But what I did have to do was I got the String Joy set here, and the String Joy set was a custom set for eight string guitars. This is the only way I figured out you can get a wound 24 string for this high six string here. Because the baritone strings that String Joy sells come with just a normal string and I wanted them all to be wound. To get the wound string you gotta like get a custom eight string set and so essentially what I did was I got um, from you know the very bottom a 95 going all the way to the 24 and then I just put in two extra tens just so I can have in my stash so that's kind of like a hack you have to do if you want all wound strings. <laughs> So we get that cool wound sound on that high string. So one of the things that I learned was that if you're using locking tuners, this big fat 95 is gonna break. So you lock it down, you turn it, you know, your half turn, and the angle of that turn for the thick string is so sharp that it just breaks. And so you have to actually get these wound a couple of times. So what I did was I went and I bought a pack of six string bass guitar slinkies yellow pack which came with a 90 and i wanted to go down from the 95 of string joy to the 90 and i'm happy i did because i'm getting this really great attack tight tight string And you can't beat that, you can't get that sound with the 95, it's way too thick and you lose a little bit of that guitar sound with the 95. So this, it sounds great. It sounds pretty flippin' amazing. So the really cool thing is I got this, you know, tone knob on here and I can go to my, you know, neck pickup, roll off the tone completely and I get these really cool bass sounds. So 
just with rolling off the tone knob, you get that sound, but I can like get my tone back in there and I can really kind of dig into it and you can get that really cool grit that you're normally like used to hearing with like, you know, Rick and Bucker basses. <laughs> And that's just the neck pickup, so I can get really smooth tones. And I can get kind of some raunchy stuff. And of course I have um, on a reverse wound, reverse polarity middle pickup, so I have all those like in-between sounds, which is totally awesome. And obviously I have my bridge pickup and that's getting the brightest, you know, sharpest attack tone. So. Oh, it's just so cool. So it's really, really cool. A lot of good stuff here. A lot of great tones coming out of this thing. So, super happy with the way this parts caster came out. I paid $65 for the neck, and I paid $69 for the body. I used a coupon. And I bought the bridge and the pick guard. And that's all the money I put into it. I had the tuners, I had the electronics, the knobs, and the pickups already. Um, and I even had the barrels for the back. So I didn't put a lot of money into this. I just had stuff laying around and I built it. So super happy. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.